Hey guys, in this video I'm going to try to explain everything I can about flashlights in as little time as possible. All killer pickup animations take 3 seconds. A killer isn't considered completely blinded until the flashlight beam is completely closed. Flashlight blinds take 1 second to complete. Because of this, the blind has to start after the 2 second mark of the killer pickup animation. It has to start after the 2 second mark because killers cannot be flashlight saved during an animation. They can be blinded though. Being in position to get a flashlight save can be pretty difficult too though. If a killer doesn't have a wall or a tree to look at, or they're not bringing a light born, they'll typically look around the down and just face the way that is least likely for the survivor to be able to get to. In this case, it's the edge of the map they're facing towards because they just checked over there and nobody's over there. In some situations, it's the back of shack or the closest wall or obstruction that they can find, or it's just the opposite direction of where they seen you if they saw you following them earlier, which is why it's important not to be seen. Speaking of being found, keep in mind that killer's FOV is very narrow unless they have something like Shadowborn or Monitor and Abuse equipped. If you're the survivor getting down, you need to crawl away from walls and other structures so that the person with the flashlight can save you. If you're not down near a wall, you should crawl towards other resources. Things like lockers can be used to locker tech. And better than that, you can crawl towards pallets, which can be used to CJ tech. And even if the survivor near you doesn't have the ability to CJ tech you, they can always normal pallet save you. Don't be the survivor that gets downed and does nothing. Recover only if you think the killer is leaving or once you get to one of those resources. Speaking of using resources, we're gonna have another cash prize 1v1 tournament probably around the 23rd. I don't have a lot of information on it just yet, but if you're one of the people that kind of missed the last one, I highly recommend joining my Discord and follow me on Twitch. The links to those are in the description below. Also, this is where I was gonna put a sponsor to the video, but they wanted a little bit too much soul selling and not quite enough 1v1 prizes, so if you could like and subscribe, that would be super helpful. Anyway, back to the video. You can also blind a killer who's stuck in animation. Things like window vaulting, door breaking, pallet breaking, or survivor hooking are moments where you can blind the killer and they have no option to look away. It's almost never a good idea to try to blind a killer who is not stuck in an animation. Things that come to mind are survivors that try to blind the killer when they're carrying a survivor towards them. Sometimes this will work, a lot of times it will not. Survivors who are being pulled out of lockers can also be flashlight saved. This works against most killers and on most lockers as long as you have a 45 degree angle from the killer and you flashlight save about when you hear this sound. The exception to this is Pyramid Head and Ghostface experience a bug which requires not only a very generous angle but also very precise flashlight timing. Survivors can make up for this by slow vaulting out of the locker so that then if the killer grabs them, it becomes a grabbed flashlight save. Grabbed flashlight saves are exactly the same as normal saves. It's a three second animation that needs to start two seconds in for one second of flashlight blind. These saves can be done on lockers, windows, pallets, generators, hook saves, even Demogorgon portals. On a lesser note, you can burn Wraith when he's cloaked, you can burn a nurse who's holding her blink too long, you can take the option for the nurse to blink away if you have a flashlight beam on her before she presses the blink key, and you can force a spirit out of phasing by blinding her. This last tip is a little bit longer, but probably the most important after all those other tips that I've just given you. And it's that if you know anything about Dead by Daylight, you know that urban invasion and self-care when used incorrectly can be incredibly bad and give the killer a lot of free pressure. Keep in mind that trailing the killer too long with a flashlight does the exact same thing as urbaning around the map or running all the way to the corner to self-care. You shouldn't trail the killer way too long if it's more valuable to spend your time on a generator. You shouldn't chase a killer that you know has infectious fright and a brain to take infectious fright procs. And even if the killer is gonna down them quickly, if it's a smart killer that you just know you're not gonna get the flashlight save on, don't waste your time. Spend it more wisely doing generators. Thanks so much for watching. Like if you like. Subscribe if you like me. And I hope to see you in the next one. Later.